Hi, welcome back aboard the Cruiser Olympia here at Independent Seaport Museum in Philadelphia. My name is Kevin, and today we're going to be talking about the Olympia's turrets. Here's a replica of one of our 8 inch gun turrets. This is what we'd like to call a pillbox turret, a perfectly round uh, container that held two 8 inch guns. The 8 inch guns could each fire a 250 pound bullet up to about 3 miles and the crew complement of one of these turrets is about 12 gunners. A lot of guys stuck in a really small space. Even by the 1890s when Olympia was outfitted with these turrets, they were considered fairly archaic and we're going to talk a little bit about why that is. Olympia's turrets were used pretty extensively in the Battle of Manila Bay during the Spanish-American War. They were used against the Spanish fleet sitting in Manila Bay and the crew had a very hard time operating them. The turrets were pretty slow to move back and forth, and when they did move to one side, the whole ship would start heeling over, which would throw off their aim. They had issues internally where when the guns fired, the black powder was producing uh, gases that would come back into the turret and choke the crew. It would make their eyes burn from the sulfur content in the gases, and they had to constantly escape up the hatch that's on top of the turret to get some fresh air and to clear out their watering eyes. To compound that, the telescopic sights inside these two sighting hoods on top of the turret uh, were fogging up so they couldn't see what they were shooting at. All in all then, the turrets actually were very ineffective during the battle and the smaller 5-inch gun battery that's in the sides of the ship was actually a lot more effective in, um, in fighting the enemy. Because of this, the Navy looked at ways to improve the turrets later in the future. In 1902, Olympia's turrets were upgraded extensively in an attempt to modernize them to the modern age. And uh, they were upgraded in several ways. They put in electric motors instead of the steam gearing that they used to have to be able to turn the turret faster side to side. They upgraded the guns and the sights so that they could see better, and they switched the smokeless powder, which wouldn't burn out the crew. Um, however, all these upgrades could not solve the issues with the turret that were fundamental to a pillbox turret of this type. They still would list the ship over, heel it over when the turret moved side to side. The crew was still very cramped and the loading speeds were very very slow so they couldn't shoot many bullets very quickly. Because of this they found that the turrets were completely obsolete. They were not up to uh, snuff with any of the battleships of the era or even some of the cruisers of the era and they found very quickly that Olympia was going to be decommissioned sooner than later if they couldn't find a way to upgrade the ship for new use or to be uh, uh, modern like the rest of the fleet. So a lot of people then ask us why the turrets are now replicas. What happened to the real turrets? Well the answer to that question is World War I. World War I was a new age of warfare for the US Navy and all other navies in the world and turrets like the pillbox turrets on Olympia were completely obsolete by that time. So Olympia, being a little cruiser that she was, was basically made into a light cruiser, a patrol vessel. And they decided that, like the rest of the fleet, Olympia needed to be a uniform gun platform, meaning that every single gun on board has to be the same type. That makes it easier to feed ammunition to all the guns. It means you can have a lot more ammunition on board for that specific battery. And you don't have to worry about uh, tossing ammunition of different types all over the vessel and having different ways of doing it for each type of gun. So in 1917, the gun platforms were introduced. The, guns, the gun turrets themselves were scrapped completely, removed altogether. And from this point on, a gun platform was introduced that had a single 5-inch 51 gun on it. That gun was more capable than the turrets ever would be in World War I because they could turn a lot faster and they were designed to target uh, similar sized cruisers and German submarines. In the 1950s, Olympia became a museum ship and a decision was made to put mock turrets on top of those World War I gun platforms that decision was made so that the ship could be restored back to its Spanish-American War appearance. However, there wasn't a whole lot of thought put into the fact that the ship had been majorly outfitted for World War I, and a lot of the uh, features that you see throughout the vessel are actually from that later time period. So the turrets in some ways are kind of out of place. They're not really connected to anything, and they're hard to interpret because of that. 
that concludes today's brief history about Olympia's turrets. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like it and uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions or comments about today's history. So until next time, take care.